shout out to Hispanics causing panic. Hispanics are causing panic, baby. Let's do it. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is uh, Somtel Media. I'm here with Hector Tanajara at RGBA. He's got a fight lined up against Alberto Machado in Puerto Rico coming up. He's how long you've been here in camp, uh, Hector? This is my second week back already. This is your second week back here in Riverside. Um, how you doing? How's it going? Uh, glad to be back. I'm doing good. You know, uh, thanks for giving me the interview. Uh, just glad to be back here in camp with Robert. Uh, I'm already in shape. You know, with Charles killing this, so. I'm already sparring a lot of rounds, uh, but I feel good, ready uh, to show everybody who I am in the 130 pound, 35 pound division. 135, 135, because um, 135 is loaded. It got really popular with Tail Female becoming undisputed. It became like the hot division, you know? Yeah. Everybody's excited about 135, but um, you know, RGBA is, a pre is, is, in my opinion, is one of the powerhouses in the boxing industry. and and um, but, it, but I know the fight on your side, at least on your side of the, Oh, the Ryan fight? You yeah. you signed it twice. No, yeah, exactly. Yeah. We were yeah. ready twice. You were uh, ready to go? Yeah, we thought it was going to get made. Already thought it was done. So we were ready to go. And, um, yeah, we were ready to go for that fight. We signed it twice. And yeah, yeah. it just didn't get made on their side. you know. But our side, you know, we're always ready. You know? always we, ready. We haven't turned down no fights. So any fight Robert has told me to get ready for, I've been down and, and able. And um, Alberto Machado, um, this is the guy that fought Cancio twice? Yes. Right? And, yeah. and, and Cancio upset him. And then um, it sounds like um, like he got released. If I'm not mistaken, I think Top Rank even picked him up. Andrew Cancio. I think he's from Blythe. Um, what can you tell us about your opponent, Alberto Machado? Uh, you know, being that he was a world champion and he lost, you know, I think he wants to, he's looking to do the same in, in a new weight division. He's going up in weight, so I'm sure he's, you know, trying to feel better. I know the struggle of being a, a big one, 135 pounder making that weight class, so I know he's trying to get on top of, in this weight division, but you know, I'm in the way. I'm also trying to get on top. I want to become a world champion, and I think that's what, he's just another step, stepping stone for me, you know, just another obstacle. Um, but it's going to be a great fight. You know, I know he's a strong, strong, explosive fighter. But, you know, I'm ready. Uh, I think I would it would have shown in my last fight with Hesta, you know, I think I just, I'm at the point in my career where I'm ready for all those big fights. Um, have you been at 135 all your in pro career? At, uh, no, I, was, I started at 130. You started at 130. I started at 130, and uh, I believe I have around five fights now at 135. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, and who at 135 gives you sparring here at RGBA? I know there's several 135ers here. Yeah, there's several 135ers, but uh, I usually spar bigger guys. You know, I'm right okay. now I'm sparring Virgil. Okay. Ortiz, you know, that's... And he's at 147. 147, two weight classes higher. And I'm sparring Baby, you know, who's a uh, higher weight class than me, too. So, you know, it's good that I'm sparring, you know, bigger guys. So that by the time I get to the fight, you know, it's it's a little bit easier, you know, a little bit more common there. Uh, Robert recently shared um, a lot of the history between signing you and the group that he signed in mm -hmm. back in 2015. And um, you had a very decorated amateur career. Everybody knew your name. And, and I'm not saying it to put you down because I think you're going to be a world champion. Yeah. But I, I got kind of excited that Joshua got it first. I don't know why, because I like the way Robert talked about it. It's harder to get Josh fights because he's a lower weight class, yeah. and some of those divisions are harder to get opponents. Yeah. You know, even 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 being with Golden Boy, which is one of the biggest promoters in the world, but still, even then, like the way Robert talked about it, like at first when he took the deal to Top Rank, like Top yeah, Rank said, "Yeah, we'll take Hector." Yeah. yeah. And, and they kind of like said, well, we'll skip on the other three. Like, we're okay, we're just with Hector. Yeah. And then kind of Golden Boy kind of said the same thing. And then Robert kind of forced their hand and said, yeah. no, it's it's an all or nothing take. Yeah. You know, and they signed all of you. They signed you. Mm -hmm. They signed Josh Franco, who's a world champion now. They signed Genaro Gomez, who's from San Diego, where I'm from. And they signed Jonathan Navarro, who's from East L.A., yeah. uh, who's a 140-pounder. All different styles, all different amateur backgrounds, but all, all with a lot of potential. But I'm... I don't know. It's just something about it. That, yeah. Like I, like I always felt, and I think everybody knew. With as, as successful as you were in the amateurs, yeah. everybody goes, "Hector's going to be a world champion." Yeah. Just they just got to develop him, and he's going to get there. Mm -hmm. But the fact that Josh did it and the way he did it is, 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 is it, it holds a special place. I'm, I'm sure for Robert and for Pita, and, and even you no, being a stable mate. Yeah, even me. You know, um, it's crazy. Like you said that the, because. Even before, you know, I knew Josh was different. You know, I knew he was he was ready. You know, since he turned pro, he was already 
sparring Carlos Squadras and yeah. he was, you know, putting it on him. You know, I, I, it's just I already knew. I always told Josh, you know, he was going to become world champion. He was, and I, I believe that he was going to be doing it first because, you know, the weight classes is smaller. Like you said, there's not that many fights. So, you know, you, uh, you go higher in the rankings. Oh, quicker. you get higher faster. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean? that, makes, yeah. that makes sense. I didn't think about it like that. Now that you mentioned it like that, that yeah. makes a lot of sense, Hector. Yeah, so I, I knew that Josh would, out of all of us, become the first world champion, you know. Um, and he's, you know, to me, he's my favorite fighter right now of all time. I always tell him he's my favorite fighter. So, you know, I look up to him, even though, you know, we grew up together and everything. That's my boy. But, yeah, I'm, I'm happy that he became uh, champion first. And, like, it's crazy. No one even, like, no one really knew him. And, you know, here he is, world champion now. So, you know, I'm happy for him. That's my brother. And so I knew he was going to become world champion. How does it feel? Um, you started with 2015 with the team, but then Virgil came the summer of 2018. And you have a lot of history with him back yeah. from Texas. Um, how, do, how does it feel? I mean, you get to, I mean, I'm sure you, you did a lot of sparring with him when you guys were in the amateurs. I'm, I'm pretty sure you guys were probably even the same weight. But um, how does it feel to have him in camp now? Like, you, we, you stay in the same house, and you, 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 like you just said, he's your sparring partner. How does yeah. that feel? Yeah, when, when he first came here, you know, it was, it was, it was tight. You know, it was badass that he came because it felt like the amateurs again. Like, we all grew up together. We always went to tournaments together and everything. So it was, uh, it was badass, you know. I mean, it felt like, like normal, you know. It felt like he was already part of the team, kind of, you know what I mean? Sure. Uh, because we grew up together. So it's just, it's crazy to see that we were together growing up in the amateurs and now we're together in the pros so it's badass so I think it's like even being here you know everyone's like a family but even more of a family because we all grew up together uh, being with Golden Boy um, the majority of your fights were at the Belasco and at and, and at Indio and at first I was kind of like why does Golden Boy do that you know like I, why don't they take him to Texas earlier than that and uh, I was talking to another guy who I do a show with his name is Diesel. And he said, no, nah, let, him, let him earn his stripes over there in Cali. And then when he's getting closer to title fights and when he's a contender, bring him back to, to San Antonio. And how did it feel to go back to Texas? Man, it was, it was a surreal feeling, you know, probably the best feeling I've had so far in my career. Uh, and everyone, Bur yeah, Burgos was your opponent, right? Burgos was my opponent. Okay. Uh, opponent that Mikey fought before, sure. you know, durable guy. He fought for the world title, you know, he's a strong, tough guy. So it was badass that I fought a good fighter. And being in my hometown, you know, everyone always asks me, oh, when are you going to fight here? When are you going to fight here? I would always tell them, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's coming. It's coming. You know, it's, it's coming. coming. Sure. So, you know, it was it was a surreal feeling. And everyone says, you know, that when they when they said my name, when they announced my name, that I had a big ovation that night. So it was a good feeling. And uh, I hope to do that again and hopefully uh, be the main event and sell out. Do you have any concerns with the fight being uh, in Puerto Rico? Um, not, I mean, just any, any feeling about anything? No, I don't have no concerns. You know, there's, there's not too many people that would take that fight in, in Puerto Rico. But, no, I have no concerns. That actually motivates me. You know, I know I have to go in there with the, the best Hector Tanahara that there is, you know, to leave, not leave it in the judges' hands. So it's more motivation for me. I just heard you say in the question earlier that you already came in shape. So that means you're working out at, back at home, you're staying in shape? You look, I'm looking at you now and you look, I mean, I know you got a shirt on, but yeah. you look, you look close to weight. Yeah, and no, I'm already close to weight. I, I was dieting and stuff back home. Okay. Um, I was working out, yeah, a little bit, you know, but just the, the work here, working with Charles and, and Robert and Pita and Chepe, you know, they train us. It's just a different level here. So sure. you get, just it takes one week and you get back in shape crazy. And that's how I feel right now. And I feel in good shape and it's only going to get better. Hispanics are causing panic, baby. Let's do it.